What's going on YouTube? Welcome to iStep Gaming and today I'm going to be teaching you how to be a good support. Now before I get into the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to keep up with any future content. I'll be leaving the link to my Discord in the chat below. Or if you would like to watch me live on Twitch, I'll also be leaving that link as well. Now, the first first things first, I want to tell y'all a few things about being support. Um, first essential thing about being a support is that it is your job to start rotating once you are the most comfortable to start helping out your team right and that could either mean being a healer that could mean applying a whole lot of cc or that could just mean being there to guard to um save or guard the enemy team essentially being like a second jungler once you hit level five right because for me i like rotating once i can get my ultimate and i have at least a card or two on now the thing about being a good support is that you don't always have to play one of the Guardians, right? You don't always have to play Kepri, you don't have to play Sylvanas, you don't have to play Kumba, you don't have to play Cthulhu or Geb, right? Like a traditional support or Ganesha, you don't have to play those characters, right? You have to play somebody who can be a sufficient tank and can put on good supportive items, which I'll get to a little later. So, with that being said, that's why... You can see an assassin in the support lane, such as Fenrir, because he could be a good support. He has that good ult where he could drag people back. He has um, a good heal. Good. He has a good stun, right? Or you could see somebody like Naja, because he has a stun. He can uh, reduce protections, and he has that banish ult, which is always really decent. Even though these are technically flexes, you can sometimes see an assassin in the support lane. Or better yet. You see Warriors. Horus is still probably one of the best supports right now because he has a stun that reduces protections and then he has a knockup that has a slow with an ult that can get his entire team into a team fight. It's really useful. Or you can see probably like an Achilles because he has stun or an Odin because he has the cage, etc, etc, etc. A good support doesn't always necessarily mean that you have to be a guardian, right? So that brings me to my next point which is the type of support you want to be. Now, me personally, I like being an aggressive support. So you'd probably see me running like a Horus or a, 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 which one call this? A Hercules. Or sometimes you see me playing Ares or Kumba or Cthulhu or Cerberus. Somebody who plays really aggressive because my play style for being an aggressive support is that you don't have to protect your carry or your team if the enemy team, if the enemy person is dead. Now, with being an aggressive support, that means you're probably, let me go ahead and show you. So, with being an aggressive support, that could mean stuff like that could mean stuff like getting where like a stone of binding. That's always really good. Void stone, getting something that can essentially make you take. Uh, essentially, you're playing a warrior in the solo lane, uh, or a solo laner in the support lane. Right? So you're going to be building items that can help you do a lot of damage while also being really tanky, being that front line that your team needs. Um, there's also the healing support. Um, that's Sylvanas. You know, because he has this little ability here with, that can heal his team. You have character, you have the mages, like Aphrodite, you got Baron, you have, you have Hell. People that can heal your team, or even Raw, as a matter of fact. People that can heal your teammates. Right? Then you have the defensive supports. Now, defensive supports are people like Geb, Kepri, um, sometimes Kumba, or uh, Terra or Sylvanas. Again, uh, defensive supports are people who save their kit to protect the team. Right, so you're not going to be, you're really not going to be using your mana to help your carry clear. Um, essentially, you're just going to be saving your abilities to maybe sometimes poke and to get the enemy support or the enemy damage dealer off of your team. So Geb, you know, he has a shockwave, the knockup, he has the shield, the stun. We have arguably Ganesha, he has this silence, he has a root, uh, he has a stun into a knockup. Then you have Kepri, has this amazing ult. And then you have the root and the pull, right? So essentially those are the different types of supports, at least the way I categorize them. Now we're going to go into the items you should be building as a support. So as a support, you're generally going to be building the same items, whether you're physical or you're magical. But we're going to go over magical and then give you some tips on some physical cards you can build. Right. So, 
or a support, this is probably going to be your best friend, Gauntlet of Thieves. Um, if you don't know what Gauntlet of Thieves does, it gives you health, and then for each stack that it gets, you get one physical and one magical protection, evolving, and then once this item reaches max stacks at 50, you get an extra 10 physical and 10 magic protections that also gives it to your allies around you. So essentially, building this item can give you 60 protections while giving your team an extra 10. Really good item. And it really change it really does change the game for us. Um, other items you're gonna you could be building are sovereignty and hardware amulet, similar to what Gauntlet of Thieves does. This um, gives you protections and health, while also increasing the protections of your allies around you. For hardware amulet, it gives 15 magical, and then for sovereignty, it gives you 15 physical. So these two items are probably gonna be your best friends. Well, now outside of these three items, just comes with the character you're playing. Um, Kumba is one of the easier supports in the game, while also being one of the better supports in the game. Um, so items like Breastplate of Valor to help his cooldowns, um, something that can help you um, essentially a lot for me is Predwin. Getting that health shield makes it to where you can be even tankier, gives you, gives you a little bit of damage with the explosion on the health shield, while also giving you some cooldowns with the protections. Um, Stone of Binding is also really good on supports that have a lot of CC. Uh, Kuma Karna, for example, has um, this root, and then this Mez here, which makes it to where anybody that hits them afterwards will um, deal additional damage because he's reducing their magical infection. So Stone Abundance is also good. So, other items you could possibly build, um, Void Stone, again, for those characters who can deal the dish out a lot of damage, like Ares. Um... I wouldn't recommend building this card, Emperor's Armor, but Emperor's Armor does allow you to dive towers. So you can, so sometimes you can use this item, especially with certain team comps. Like if you're a support and you have an Oleron on your team, you can slap this card on whenever you else the tower. You can, you get free tower dive, so it's a really good item. Now for characters like Sylvanas or supports like Sylvanas that have um, healing, good items to build on them would be Rod of Asclepius, that which increases. The amount of healing they get. I hope I said that. Lepius. Lepius. Whatever the fuck. So it increases your healing by 10% while also increasing that healing by 15% if they have dealt or taken damage within the last 5 seconds. Which increases it up to 15%. So, um, another good item would be Lotus Crown. Lotus Crown gives protections for anybody that is affected by your healing. So Vonis is a really good person to build an item like this on because he has this little AoE heal here. Um, and then another item that you could possibly build is Soul Gem. Now Soul Gem is more for utility mages that have healing, like Baron or Hell or things along those lines. People who have extremely low cooldowns that can keep throwing out abilities. Um, this is not only a good support item, but this can also be a really good damaging item, because it does give cooldowns, magical lifesteal, and um, it makes it to where your next ability that damages an enemy god will deal bonus damage. So, um, I would recommend building this on Sylvanas since his cooldowns are relatively low. But if you want to put it on like a Baron or a Hell or anybody who has relatively low cooldowns, Soul Gem is also a really good item to go. Nice. Um, two more items that I want to talk about is Ethereal Staff and Gem of Isolation. Um, let's start with Gem of Isolation. Gem of Isolation is good on characters who have a lot of tick damage. Um, Sylvanas can kind of use this. Um because his wisps deal damage every like every second for five seconds and then he has this little root so once they come out the root they'll be slowed and then if he gets hit if you hit them with this ability here that pulls them back to you they'll be slowed so it makes it incredibly hard for them to get away and then you have um ethereal staff so whenever you hit an ability you steal their mana and their max and you steal their mana and a percentage of their health for 45 seconds which is good Here's the issue with those two items. So, these two items are mostly meant for either the mid laner or the solo laner. As a support, you need to be building items that benefit your team. Um, building Gem of Isolation kind of benefits your team, but honestly, you're not really going to be using a lot of supports who need this item, um, Sylvanas included. And Ethereal Staff is okay for stealing stats from the enemy support or the enemy tank, so it's really strong. But this does nothing for your team. So I would not recommend going towards these items 
However, if your team is lacking a little bit of damage, it's okay to sacrifice maybe one card, but don't look at this, but don't always try to do um do things like that. You need to put a little bit more trust in your team. I know it's hard, but um building these items will do nothing for your team, so I'd recommend staying away from them. So there are two more items I do want to talk about. Um, and that's Relic Dagger and Hide of the Urchin. So, um, Relic Dagger is a, a is an amazing support item. Um, well, if you don't know, Relic Dagger gives you 300 health, 10% cooldown, and 7% movement speed, but, um, your relics have 40 seconds cooldown reduction. That alone is very, very strong. So, you can pop um, upgrade a barrier or a lot more. You could pop um, sprint earlier. You can pop um, horrific emblem more uh, more often. You can pop. I would recommend not using this. And but you can also pop cursed on a lot sooner. Upgrade cursed on. These items are staples for, or these relics are staples for orcs. And being able to spam these a lot sooner than you usually can is very good imagine a team an enemy team of healers that can't heal and then they take more damage if they if they try to heal themselves a lot more often than not imagine like imagine being able to slow the enemy team more often than they can uh they, they can deal with like this relic dagger is an amazing item now high the urchin kind of falls in the same place as ethereal staff and gem of isolation however the only reason why i would recommend building this item over others is because it makes you tankier for your team so you don't instantly die against somebody who's against a team who's throwing everything they have at you now over this item i'd probably build a predwin just because it, even though it gives less protections it does give cooldown reduction with that gigantic health shield but Hide of the Urchin is a good item to build if you're not sure what last tanky item you want. Um, so now that we talked about that, there are some items that I recommend you never build. Right? And there's quite a few. So, if you're playing a support, something that you need to realize that it's not your, uh, it's not your job to do damage. It is not. Your job is to help your team in team fights. That's what it is. And to do that, you need to be, and you need to be able to give auras. You need to be able to, um, you don't need to be able to heal, but you need to be able to get people off of your team. You need to have really good, uh, a really strong ult. Um, like your ult has to have a knockup. It has to have a banish. It has to hit the entire team. It has to have a stun. It has to have something that benefits your team really, really well. So, in the note of that, don't be building Rada Tahuti. Don't be building a ring. Don't be building freaking like Spear of the Magus. Don't be building Spear of Desolation, Obsidian Shard. Don't be building uh, Staff of Meridian. Stay, essentially, stay away from this entire tab. The offensive tab. Stay away from it. Unless you're looking for specific cards like Void Stone and you have no idea how to find it in like the defensive tab. Or if you're like me and you're trying to find like Rod of Asclepius. But you don't feel like going over the defensive and looking to health. And you get this instead. And go here instead. Stay away from this tab. Another thing I want to talk about are relics. Um, now, me, I mostly play Conquest. So, I'm using relics and items and characters that are usually good for Conquest. So, on that note... Let me show you something. Let me, let me show you a relic, if I can. Um, you see this item right here? Do, do you see this? Stop getting this. Stop using Meditation Cloak. This is not a good card. And let me tell you why. There are a couple reasons. The first reason, anti-heal. Most of the time, if not all of the time, the enemy team is going to be building a lot of anti-heal, depending on your team comp. Now, you can probably get away with it if you have nobody on your team that heals, 
but more than likely somebody is going to be building some kind of sustain so people are going to be getting anti-heal to deal with it i.e if your plane gets a baron or a hell aphrodite or a hades your the enemy team is going to be building a lot of stackable anti-heal they're gonna have the pestilence they're gonna have the brawlers they're gonna have the divine they're gonna have the toxic blade so half of this item's utility is already gone because that health that you get is so severely reduced that the card becomes useless another thing you see these two items i have here a shell and a cursed onk you're not really going to be building cursed onk support but hear me out you lose so much utility and team saving as a support if you build medi yes you can give mana back but giving mana back won't matter if the carry or the mid or the jungler just instantly dies you no know, you need to be having sprint you need to be having upgraded barrier you need to be having a horrific emblem you need to be having i don't know something that helps your team medi will not help your team it feels nice at the beginning don't get me wrong because i'll be honest there has been some times where somebody has been saved because they've used medi on their carry and i didn't have anti-heal yet but i guarantee you once that 12 15 minute mark hits that medi's not going to mean anything to me anymore because i'm going to have some anti-heal to deal with it and it's just just stay away from this item this item is not for you use this in assault Medi is made for Assault. It's not made for Conquest. Stop using this item. So there are a couple of things you need to know about playing support. It's a couple textbook things, a couple sins and things along those lines. But for one, I want to talk about the mindset of being a support. A support is a selfless role. It's a thankless but very important role as well. To me, support is probably the most important, one of the most important roles in the game. That's a good support can put the entire team on his back because he protects the team. He has, or she, has the good CC. They have the good engaging or disengaging ults. They have the aggressiveness with the save, with the, um, state, with the saving mentality, right? And something you need to understand of being support, there are a few things. One, you're going to get behind, right? You're never going to be ahead of your mid unless they're bad. You're never going to be ahead of the solo unless they're bad. You're never going to be ahead of the jungler unless they're bad. Hell, you might not even be ahead of your carry or you're in the lane with a person if they're bad. Unless they're bad, right? And you need to know that that's okay. Because your items are fairly cheap. Preedwin is 2400. Eye of the Urchin is 2450. Pestilence is 2250. Dawn of Thieves is $23.50. They are really cheap cards for that reason. That's why you shouldn't be building damaging items like a blood like a blood force at $2,800 or a freaking serrated is a $25 or a crit item, which I've seen a lot. I don't understand why, but it happens. You're you live here in this cheap side of the of the items list. That's why you have Garden's Blessing as well, because you get more gold, so you can get your cheap items faster and be extremely tanky for your team. Um, you need to be able to sacrifice getting a, an early game card. You need to be able to be comfortable with just getting a Guardian's Blessing, um, a Guardian's Blessing, T1 Boots, and you need to be comfortable with just getting this and one or two healing, uh, healing potions, because that's what's gonna, usually going to happen at level 1 in a Conquest match. Um, you need also need to know, like I said, is that you are very important, but you're very selfless at the same time. You need to have the mindset of, I'm going to die for my team. That's just what it is. Don't worry about your KD. You are as a support. The way you need to be looking is your deaths to your to your um, assists. That's where a good support will shine. A good support will have a majority, if not all of the assists. That's just how it is. You're going to have more assists on your team than anybody else. Sometimes you'll get those last hits, yeah, but most of the time you're going you're going to be aiming for assists. You need to you need to understand that you are the babysitter of the team. And you have to be very selfless and willing to sacrifice a kid. You need to a good way to put it is that you need to be able 
to be willing to get off of a guaranteed kill and save your teammate before he dies. You need to be comfortable with that. Right? And it's not easy to do, especially coming from and especially coming from me who likes playing solo and mid because I don't like having to, to rely on somebody else, but I, I will play support if I have to because I play this game. And something else you need to realize is that you need to know how to play support because you're going to eventually get this role. So you need to know how to do it. And you need to be comfortable with sacrificing some of your gold to get wards. Everybody should be getting wards, but especially yourself and the jungler. You need to be comfortable with sacrificing some items to get a ward for your team. And then... Finally, the last thing I need to be able to tell you is that, yes, you can play an aggressive support, somebody who can engage for their team a lot, kind of like a second solo laner, but you need to be able to play aggressively and still be able to protect your carry or your mid or your jungler, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. That's why I didn't think that Ares is that amazing, because even though he has a lot of damage and he gets more benefit than anybody else with aura items, he is not a great support. Because he has nothing to protect his carry. Or his mid. He has a slow and a cripple. Oh god. Ignore that. He has a slow and a cripple. But he doesn't have um, a stun. He doesn't have a root. He has his ult. Which I'm 100% sure that everybody will get beads against. Because nobody wants to deal with an Ares ult. And that, But that's why I also think Horus is an amazing support. Because he could be an aggressive support. But he has this stun, he has this heal, he has this knockup. You know what I'm saying? You need to be able to find that balance. Somebody who can do those things while also protecting their teammates. The last thing I want to talk about are the easiest supports to pick up. Because I know not everybody wants to play support, so I'm going to give you all some supports that are really easy to play. One is Cthulhu. He recently came out. Now, through recent play... I feel like this character isn't as busted as everybody makes him out to be. However, he can still be really strong and a good aggressive support. But he, but he also has this, um, this fear on this. You know how to hit his combo. He has this slow into a cripple, and he has this knockup and this ult. A lot of people know that is that the third ability in his ult can heal. So he can be a pretty decent support while also reducing their damage with his passive. He's a really good support to pick up. Kuma Karna. He was my first support outside of Ares. Um, he has this root, he has this slow, he has a mez, and he has a knockup, and he has an unkillable passive. All of which are really good for being a pretty decent support, because he can do everything that I mentioned earlier. Another good support that I recommend starting with? Geb. Now, Geb can take a little bit of time to get used to, because he is the definition of a selfless support. Right, because he has this knockup, he has this uh, shield here too, and he, ha he has to be able to manage his mana, so he's usually only going to be using his abilities... To protect his team one last support that um another good support that i recommend starting out with is either horus or guan yu or hell even nike um matter of fact i recommend nike over those two reason being is because he ha she has this really amazing passive which i'll get to in a guide video later on we have this friend ability which makes it to where they can't basic attack back she has this that eats basic attacks and pushes them away or towards the team he has this knockup, and then this ult is absolutely amazing. It has a slow. She's extremely tanky with this ult, and there's not a lot of counterplay to shields. And this ult is amazing for that. Um, one last support that I recommend playing for me is Baron. Baron is an amazing support. Now he is a mage, so he's not. He's really squishy, and but he has a heal. He has a brute. This great ult, he has the Baron's Brew. He has the ability to help his teammates do damage while also reducing their physical and magical power and their attack speed. He's a really good utility mage. And then the final person I recommend uh, trying out is Hell. Now Hell um, may not be one of the easier supports, but she does have a slow and she does have all these cleanses and heals and stuff. So. If you're looking for somebody who's a little bit more difficult, I'd recommend choosing Hell as well. Now, if you have any other questions with this role, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and leave them in the comment section below, and I'll get to you as soon as I can. If you have any video ideas you want me to do for you, I'll also be taking those as well. Without further ado, I'll catch y'all later.